welcome all friends, audio files and tech enthusiasts alike. So today we're going to unbox the IMEA Audio A07 amplifier. Boost up to 53 volt. Yeah, 12. With any static, yeah, probably hold, don't hold the PCB. Hello and welcome back to our vlog and let's go for a complete unboxing, tear down, testing and review. Stay tuned. Alright, so let me put it a bit down so that you can see what I am doing. So this was purchased of Amazon during the sale, a great summer sale. So it came about a thousand rupees cheaper than what it usually listed for. So yeah, so this is the one which also includes the power supply, so it includes the 36 watt power supply as well. This can be used up to 53 volt. Yeah, 12 amps. Yes, now this is right. So these are rated at, uh, you know, approximately 300 watts RMS into two, provided you give up juicy enough 56 volt 12 ampere power supply. But what comes in the box along with this is a 36 volt 5 ampere power supply. So we are expecting around 94 watts as per the spec sheet around 94 watts into 2 at 8 ohms impedance. So the POC S55 signature speakers that we're going to test it with are rated at 8 ohms. So let's see how it sounds. So so this this uses a chip by Texas Instruments. Yeah. So this is a Texas Instruments uh, uh, TPA3255 chip. It was released back in uh, 2017 uh, if I remember correctly. So it's, it's designed for car audio applications, home theater in a box applications and also for studio uh, monitoring, um, I mean studio uh, monitors, yeah. So the whole audio files, you know, swear by class A and class AB amplification while the professional pro audio scene has moved on to class D amplification since many, many years because they are power efficient, you know, they are lightweight. They also give excellent sound quality. For example, this one is rated at around 111 dB. So the signal to noise ratio is about 111 dB. Even the PSSR, the power supply rejection ratio is high, I think approximately 80 dB. These are very, very good specs. So in fact, all the music that you listen to are mostly recorded, mixed and mastered on, you know, studios, uh, mastered in studios using studio monitors, which run class D amplifiers. So I think it's absolutely foolhardy to say that, you know, you will only listen to music on class A and class AB. So that's, that's utter load of, of crap. So anyway, I mean, the, enough of the rant. Let's, let's go on to the unboxing. All right. <clears throat> so this is well packed. Yeah, you can see it says 2 into 300 watt. So here is the seal. So this is a sealed piece. Let me open it up. So what IME has done is they have gone a bit further. So what they have designed this for the tinkering audiophile who would also like to swap op amps. Yeah. So this is supposed to be something in which you can actually change op amps to your liking. You can tailor the sound. You know, again, 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 this is all audiophile snake oil. I mean, they, of course, there are people with, with such sensitive hearing that they can make out the difference between uh, uh, op amp chips you know for example the TLO 72 or the 2144 but yeah that's that's not for me I will not pretend I will not lie I cannot make out the difference at least yeah I mean I'm, I'm a musician as well I mean at least an amateur musician but then yeah so anyway so there are people who also are into this all right so you can see okay, this is very well made this is quite small yeah it's, it's quite small in size yeah you can see I mean the relative size of the palm of my hand uh, absolutely pure direct so there is no EQ nothing only you have a you know on off button and then you have the volume control the rear you have banana plugs and uh, also understand that this is this is bridgeable so you can actually use the PBTL configuration to to you know configure this output into mono so mono should give you about 600 watts theoretically but then yeah practically around 400 watts should be doable at around uh, 2 ohms which is which is really good power. So class D amplification relies on, you know, a bunch of MOSFETs that turn either on or off according to varying inputs. It's not like, you know, your typical class A or class B where the transistor is continuously on. So then the advantage of class D is very, very little dissipation of heat because either the transistor is fully switched on or fully switched off. It's got a very high, um, you know, uh, uh, wide bandwidth, almost up to 100 kilohertz, which is really good. Yeah, I think it also responds all the way from about 5 hertz. That's what I've tested previously as well. Anyway, let me show you all that. We'll also go through the spec sheet in some time. But yeah, now coming to the amplifier, it's built well, as I told you. Yeah, you have vents below. You have vents on the side as well. This is supposed to be beefed up with good Nishikon caps and then, you know, swappable op-amps. So let's see. Yeah, I hope you can see it. 
Yes. Now let's go to the TED on. Yeah. All right. Let me also show you the power adapter. So this is the power adapter that comes in the box. That is at a 36 volt, 6 amp. Yeah. So that's that's good enough. Yeah. Approximately 180, uh, 180, 190 RMS. So let, let's see how much power this performs. And of course the power cable along with it. So very well packed. Nice box. No damage. Thank you Amazon so far. Now it's time for the tear down. Now, 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 let us tear it down. Let me figure out the screws. So there's my trusty old screwdriver kit. All right, so I think I found the right guy and it's time to open it up. So yeah, a quick inspection reveals that, you know, there are two here. So probably this is the heat sink, which is, I mean, the board, which is anchored to the heat sink and then the bottom chassis. Yeah, also you see four screws here, which anchor the, the jacks. So I'm assuming that if you remove all this, it should be openable from the front. Uh, yeah, possibly there should be one bolt here as well. Uh, yeah, so this also will have to be removed, the potentiometer knob. Yeah, then it should be ready. All right. All right, so the back panel is off. Wow, nice. Lovely gold plated connectors, good quality connectors here. No doubt about that. Oops. Oops. So this is the JC plate. And the amp should come smoothly out. Come on, maybe. Yeah, take care not to damage it with any static. Yeah, probably hold, don't hold the PCB. Alright, so it, it looks to me that uh, possibly this this need not have been removed. So I'm assuming that uh, that 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 yeah the one which is anchoring the jacks at least don't need to be removed. But anyway, nevertheless, yeah. Uh, let's put that back in if that simplifies things. But yeah, before that, let's have a look. So as promised, Nishikon capacitor, 63 volt, 22,000, uh, 2200 microfarad. So as promised, heavy caps. Uh, this is the relay board, uh, I mean this is the relay which is the speaker on off relays for the soft start circuit and then there you go. So here are the op amps which are swappable. So you can see that they are not directly soldered but they are um, you know into the um, I mean the, the, the socket so you can pull them out. So the default, uh, um, yeah, let's, let's go closer, these are any triple five, yeah, five five three two, yeah. So standard. So yeah, I was expecting OPA two one three four, but then yeah. So these are uh, not super premium op amps, but yeah, but 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 good enough, yeah. Audio file grade, very good. Second so noise issue. I hope you can see it, and I hope you can see me too. All right. All right, so now as we've got a good look at this, I think uh, it's time to put it back and then go for the testing. So yeah, to sum it up, it's very well made. The soldering is also top notch. The heat sink, yeah, the hardware is really good, including the banana plugs, the soldering, the connectors, yeah, even the potentiometer quality, the relay, the capacitors as promised. It's, it's, it's really well made. So Chinese high five is good. All right, now, so it's time to wire it up and test it. So what we're going to connect it is, you know, I'm basically using this uh, to accentuate the front channel speakers. So the Denon here is connect is, con is uh, configured as a preamp for the left right channel and then which will be fed into the IMEO audio. Yeah, basically, I don't want the Denon to drive all these channels, you know, um, and of course the center channel while, while watching movies, the center channel takes a lot of the loads. So most of the dialogue, most of the FX in the center are concentrated on the center speaker. Yeah, and then so that's, that's enough drive by itself. And then I can free up the other amp channel so that you have some, some headroom in the sound. So what I really want to do is accentuate the front left right channels. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's, it's time to wire it up. So earlier I was using the old Kenwood amplifier for this. So now I am... Uh... Alright, so now it is wired up and ready to test. So. Yeah, I think you can see how teeny weeny this looks compared to the whole setup here. So the signal path is like this. The source is an Apple TV yeah, into the uh, Denon uh, uh, AVRX3800 configured as a pre-out for the left and right channels yeah, and from the HDMI ARC into the TV. Yeah. So this is now the Denon is set into pure direct mode and stereo, so pure stereo. So no other channels will play and now it's time to power it on and see you know, how it sounds like. So, yeah, time 
I hope my pop speakers don't blow because I think uh, that will be depressing. All right. So here it is. And I hear anything so far? Let's put some volume here. Nothing yet. Yeah, I can hear something faintly now. Let's go to YouTube. For now, let's quickly test it with one of these favorite songs. Oh, yes, there it sounds. Now I can hear it. Yeah, both these speakers are playing pretty well. Behind. Let's play some non-copyright music here, yeah, for example. Beautiful. So the first thing I would like to do is pause it. Pause. Turn on the game. Hi. And gain also high. Let's see if there's any harm. Alright. Whoa, crop dead silent. Let me show you. Alright, so here it is wired. The signal source as I explained earlier. And here is the poke signature. Yeah. So the gain is really high. Sending it to you. You don't hear anything at all. It's dead silent. Lovely. Let's turn the gain low and then play it. All right, it's time for the pros and cons of this little baby amplifier here. Uh, let's start with the cons first. So initially I had very, very high expectations, but I'm sorry to say that it has not lived to that, you know, for something that advertises as audiophile grade and has not even an EQ, you expect the sound signature to be exactly flat. Yeah. But then as you can see in the test results as well, it's a very, you know, rock kind of an EQ with a bass and treble boosted. So normally we see that in cheaper amplifiers, we see that in cheaper speakers to give the impression of high fidelity. You know, when you have the treble boosted, it sounds more clear, yeah. So it, it gives a false impression of, of being high quality. But yeah, but for something that is touted as audiophile grade, this should not have been the case. One other major issue that I saw is that there is a lot of channel imbalance. So between the left and right channels, there is an imbalance of about 2 dB which is also surprising. I mean, of course, that could be an issue with the potentiometer, but then again, again, there is some serious lack of confidence here, which is which is now making me reconsider. Yeah. Would I use it? Uh, definitely not for the left and right channels. You know, at least I'm not going to preamp uh, the dead on out with these, with these for the front channels, at least. Maybe for the surrounds or maybe for the height channels, I would use it, but definitely not for the front channels because I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that, that that trust is lost. It is not a flat sound signature. Of course, we could do a lot of EQ correction, but then I think uh, it doesn't warrant that, you know. Uh, yeah. Should you buy it? Of course, you can go ahead for non-critical uh, listening applications. I would say it's a strong yes. But for critical listening applications, or if you really want to build an awesome stereo setup, look for something with EQ because, yeah, with of course, with, with EQ, you can correct it. So one of the different IMEA models which has a bass and treble control, then you could tweak the sound signature to your liking. You can also review the Fosse Audio V3, which, which is also supposed to be quite good by the Audio Science Forum reviews. So have a look there as well. Yeah. Thank you for listening. So this is Akustik Malayali signing off. 
stay tuned for more videos coming your way all the best goodbye and happy listening